Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of my videos. Today I've got another beautiful puzzle, this particular one composed by the player Gendrik Kasparian. Uh, he was a very famous puzzle composer. He actually had 600 different uh, endgame puzzles that he produced, 57 of which would end up winning him uh, competition prizes for puzzle compositions. Um, a very strong player, he actually is on an Armenian stamp, so he's a very well-respected, well-regarded uh, well player. Uh, he even actually would win, I believe, the Mar Armenian Chess Championships 11 times, including tying first twice with uh, Tigran Petrosian, who of course was a world champion. Um, so this particular one was part of a selection of puzzles that he produced, uh, the theme of which being domination in the endgame. So see if you can solve it. It's white to move and to find the best continuation. So see if you can do it. Um, just to kind of give you just a tiny little bit of hint to sort of help you out or kind of give you a little overview of this position. White is up a pawn, but he's got this particularly nice pawn that is looking to promote on a8. Meanwhile, black on the other hand does have his own pass pawn and it is ready to promote on the next square, but this king seems to be guarding it very nicely. So uh, see if you can solve it. It's The solution is particularly difficult. Um, but as I say, if you can try and find ways to dominate black's position, um, then you should find yourself getting this solution very, very easily. So, okay, I'll let you, I'll let you pause the video and see if you can solve it. Okay, so firstly what I'll do is I'll show you some failed solutions. Um, so you might be thinking to yourself, can I just not push this pawn here on a6 and then look to promote it? The problem with this is that this uh, this pawn was guarding this b6 square, as also this knight was also guarding these two squares. So they're creating a kind of barrier against the king at this point. As soon as you play a6, it releases this square now to the black king. So the king can just come here, he's going to eat up the pawn, and it should be, uh, there's not really any way that white can continue. He could try and maybe push this other pawn at some point, and maybe try and win with a knight and the pawn. The problem is this bishop here can sort of stay along this diagonal and uh, at some point as soon as his pawn moves up um, then the uh, it's going to get captured by the bishop so that should be a very straightforward uh, way to draw this game going back uh, so what else can white do in this position well uh, again if he tries to sort of maybe i don't know throw a few checks in uh, black can just get closer to the pawn, so he really doesn't want to have to move either of these two pieces, um, so neither of them are going to work. If he tries to maybe, I don't know, maybe create a second front with this pawn, maybe come into f3. The challenge with this move is, I think a simple continuation for black is to move his bishop to e3, attack the knight, and after the, uh, the knight moves, let's say to e2, um, I think a very straightforward continuation would be just to go after this pawn and uh, there's no way to uh, promote either of these pawns now. The black bishop and the black king have uh, surrounded the pawns. It should be a very easy draw. So going back, so how should white continue? Well, as I say, it's all about domination in this end game. Notice that black pieces aren't being able to do a whole lot here. Um, if either if any of them move, uh, then it's going to be a bit of a disaster. So the theme for this one and the solution for this one is a zugzwang. Uh, so a position where your opponent cannot move any of his pieces. So you might be quite surprised to see that king to h1 is the solution to this. And black has got no useful moves here. He can't move this pawn because it's blocked by the king. If he moves his bishop anywhere, then in fact it's going to end up getting forked in this position. So let's go through all the squares. If the bishop came to uh, f8, you've got a simple check winning the bishop uh, from the black king. If it comes to uh, g7, similar thing again. If it comes to g5, once again. If it comes to f4, you've got another check. It can't come to e3 because of the pawn. If it comes to d2, you've got this check. And finally, if it comes to c1, you've also got this check here. So you're going to pick up the bishop. It should be easy to convert this with 
a pawn and a knight versus a king. Uh, you know, even if the king kind of came over to try and get this pawn, this pawn just runs down actually quite simply uh, to win the game. So going back to the, the bishop can't move anywhere. But what about the king? So the problem for the black king and something that you probably noticed earlier on when I was going through some of the explanations is um, there's this lovely barrier that's been created by this uh, knight and this pawn. So the king has has to kind of move away from the pawn. And in doing so, he then uh, uh, allows this pawn to then run down the board. So if he comes, comes forward, let's say, uh, oh, actually, let me do this first. If he comes forward to b4, then you can push forward here. And this pawn is not going to get caught. You know, he could try and maybe get his bishop around, but it's just all a bit too late. The pawn is going to get there before the bishop can get to b8 to defend the position. So that doesn't work. Same with c c4 for the same reason. You just push the pawn. If you take the knight, again, you push the pawn very straightforward. And if he kind of goes to d5, you can uh, once again push the pawn. And if he comes to d6, well... Um, if, uh, whoops, go back here. If he goes to d6, then there's two ways you can do it. You can either push the pawn, which actually still works. Uh, otherwise, I think just doing the check here is probably the simplest way to win. And you win the bishop and the king here. So very nice study, a very beautiful study, just showing you how to dominate with your pieces in the end game and how the knights can sometimes dominate the bishops if uh, they are on the right squares and controlling the right points of the board. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. hope this was instructive to you, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.